Well, everywhere you turn right now, there are people desperately excited to take that end of year break so they can head out onto the water, head to the beach, relax in the sun. But of course, this innocent wish can be very dangerous. Now, a new campaign is encouraging Australians to take a photo of their skin at the start of summer on their phones and then at the end of the summer to compare. To discuss, joining us now is Dr Annika Smith, a fellow of the Australasian College of Dermatologists and consultant dermatologist at several hospitals and clinics, including the Melanoma Institute Australia. Annika, thanks for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about this campaign um, that you're involved with that's being launched this summer. Sure. So Game on Mole, essentially we're, we're harnessing this, this uh, Australian catch cry, if you like, iconic Australian catch cry, to get people to take melanoma seriously and to join the fight against melanoma this summer. The premise of the campaign is obviously to buy a T-shirt, wear it proudly this summer, in order to start a, a potentially life-saving conversation about melanoma awareness. And in addition to that, as you said, taking a photo of the skin before and at the end of summer, so one's better able to discern anything new or changing on the skin and thereby seek prompt medical review accordingly. The aim of the campaign is obviously focusing on prevention and early detection which we know saves lives. How can you tell if something is a mole? I've got lots of freckles on my arm so how can I know which is a freckle, which is a mole, what ones to be concerned about? Yeah often it's difficult to tell um, to the untrained eye. A mole is set essentially a cluster of pigment cells in the skin and it may look more prominent than an innocent freckle. Uh, the clue with melanoma, melanoma may arise de novo in the skin as a new spot, it may appear like a new mole or it may arise as change within a pre-existing mole and in those cases we're looking for change in size, shape or colour or new symptoms associated with the mole and there's a good acronym we've got called the ABCDE rule so we look for asymmetry, border irregularity, colour variegation diameter greater than six millimetres and ease for something that's evolving or changing. I think patients are actually pretty good at self-identifying their own skin lesions of concern, particularly melanoma, and we really need to listen to that intuitive nudge and seek prompt attention if we're And how concerned. do they usually evolve? Is it colour, they get darker or they grow? What is it? Yeah, a combination of things. So it may be an increase in size over time, addition of new colours, it may become elevated or become itchy, tender or sore. Interestingly, um, great idea to look at these moles before and after summer, but there are some hard to reach areas on the body, you know, your back, etc. But I think what a lot of Australians don't realise, it can occur in your scalp, it can occur on the soles of your feet. I mean, I think Bob Marley died from a melanoma under his, his toenail. That's right, that's right. So while rarer, mel melanomas can certainly occur on mucosal sites, the palms and soles, the apical surfaces, you're right, Bob Marley did die from an acromelanoma. Um, the aim is, as you say, to regularly survey your own skin, to know the skin you're in, so you're better able to detect something you're changing, and to recruit the help of someone at home, partner, friend, family member, to look at those hard to see places, the scalp, the back of the neck, the back. And as you say, concealed sites, sites that we may not typically expect to be involved with skin cancer can certainly be affected. And that that really reinforces the point that in addition to self-surveillance, just as you would a routine skin check each year to have your skin potentially formally reviewed so you're in a better position to detect things early. We're just seeing some examples here of some, um, some concerning moles. If you do have an area of concern, do the normal sun safe things work? So if you put sun cream over them or you cover them from the sun, does that mean that you're safer? So if you're concerned about any lesion, the, the first thing you need to do is go and seek prompt medical review, mm -hmm. early detection, offers you the greatest chance of cure. And so is that at a GP, at a skin cancer clinic, at a dermatologist? Because it can get expensive as well, can't it, when you're seeking advice from experts like yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you're not a person at risk who's had a prior melanoma or multiple risk factors for melanoma, starting off with your GP or a skin cancer physician is fine. If you're someone who's at high risk, and I think seeing a dedicated skin specialist is key, you mentioned basic sun protection. We need to employ the full complement of sun protective strategies that offers us the best best chance of protection and we all know what they are. They're very simple to adhere to, we just need to remember. So it's broad spectrum, 50 plus sunscreen, appropriate quantity, broad brimmed hat, sun protective clothing, sunglasses because the eye too is susceptible to melanoma and skin cancer, mm. shade and avoiding the sun during the peak periods of the day where the UVB, the cancer causing rays peaks and that's generally you know, 10 to, 10 to 3 and in addition to that 
knowing your skin and being on the lookout for anything you're changing because if it's caught early, more than 90% of melanomas can be treated with simple mm. surgery. Just with respect to those UVs, the ones that um, pr promote the, the melanoma, there are some great apps out there where you can actually track the UV ratings throughout the day, aren't there? Absolutely. So most Australians don't know that some form of sun protection is required when the UV index is greater than three. And if you look at the monthly UV average in Sydney across the year, very rarely is it less than three, which implies that mm. sun protection is very much required at, at most times. As you say, the SunSmart app is a free app that can be downloaded onto your iPhone so you can track the UV index across the day. Basic rule of thumb is early in the day, late in the day, that the safest times of day to, to be outdoors, sun protect. We want all Australians to enjoy this great country of ours and enjoy summer but to be sun safe in doing so. But it varies as well from person to person so you might be very conscious about being sun safe and may get a melanoma whereas someone who's not so conscious might escape getting a melanoma. It varies from person to person. That's true and you raise an important point. I think uh, melanoma risk rather is a composite of genetic and environmental risk factors. Overwhelmingly 90%, more than 90% of melanomas are due to um, excess ultraviolet radiation or sun, about 10% of genetic risk markers. So on that basis, we know that if most melanomas are due to excess sun, we can prevent the majority of melanomas. So we're in a very powerful position uh, moving forward. Just finishing off on the campaign, you mentioned at the beginning um, that we need to take our skin seriously. Are we taking it seriously as a nation? Because campaigns such as these would suggest that perhaps we're not, we're, ne we're needing reminders. Mm. There's still much more work to be done on this front and we need to maintain the momentum in terms of primary prevention. Recent studies suggest that while our sun protective behaviours and attitudes have improved, there's still much more improvement um, to be done on this front and particularly with respect to the younger demographic and the purpose for this campaign is really to resonate with the younger de demographic and, and hopefully engage them and get them on board because uh, melanoma is the leading cancer in the 15 to 39 year old age group. We have the highest rate of melanoma in the world, it will kill one person every five hours in this country and one person will be diagnosed every half an hour. We don't want these to be our national statistics. Mm. We can do better and we will and this is the purpose of the campaign. Prevention, early detection and together saving lives. Good message there. Dr Annika Smith, thanks very much for coming in this morning. Thank you. Thank you.